my name's Rob Meredith. I'm the coordinator of Friends of the Earth and a member of Transition Viewed. And we've decided to start a kind of gardening club, sharing our gardening expertise with other people. I own a small holding uh, where I grow lots of organic fruit and veg and have done for the last 25 years. And uh, we would like to share that expertise with you so that you can grow your own food as well. So starting from January, we're going to be producing a series of small videos showing what we're doing here week by week on the small holding and giving you ideas about what you can do at home, whether you have a window box, a patio or a full size garden. So we're here looking at a lovely bed of leeks that we're going to be eating for most of the winter. These are early leeks, as I call them. These will be eating right through until after Christmas, sown in June, planted in July, ready now. And across the way, we've got another bed of leeks, uh, which we planted later. They're hardier, can survive the winter weather, and we'll be eating those right through from March into, into May, really. And the idea is to extend cropping seasons, both for sale purposes, but also for self-sufficiency. Okay, I'm standing in a bed of winter brassicas now. This is mostly purple sprouting with Brussels sprouts along the edge. And these again were sown way back in June to be planted out in the latter part of July to be ready to feed us now. So this gardening year is a cycle where you have to be thinking some months ahead all the time to have everything at the right time. Um, it is like a dance really. Each year you try and find the rhythm of the year get the seeds in at the right time, the plants in the good soil at the right time, and hopefully the weather will come at the right time. Never had a perfect year here yet, never gonna have one. So here's a big bed of spinach and chard, ready for picking this winter, obviously far bigger than any household would require. We're normally attending markets like Hartland Farmers Market. Um, but the scale is immaterial, it's the same thing. It's about timing and soil preparation. And so this uh, replaced a crop of potatoes that was in here earlier. And we uh, had plenty of manure and organic material in the soil from that. And we were able to sow this in uh, uh, July, I think, which is a bed of second early as we took from here. So again, ready for lots of winter greens. Uh, time of abundance, really, if you've prepared for your winter. All right, now we're in the polytunnels. Uh, rather big spaces to keep clear on my own and plant up, so I have help from friends like Jackie. Uh, these are all people that live in Bude, uh, don't have big gardens themselves and come out to help me to grow the produce. And we share the, we share the hard work, we share the produce and we share the fun and we do a lot of talking in between. Okay, so here we are in one of the smaller polytunnels, more a garden sized one. This is one we inherited when we came here, rather battered and torn now, but still providing lots of lovely warmth and shelter for crops that need that extra bit. These are sweet chili, uh, sweet peppers, not chilies at all, and we'll be uh, eating these right through the winter now because we'll freeze them down. Uh, grown in pots, so again, you don't need a big area of space to use these. And they're in a soil which I can see a lovely worm is just emerging from. It's our own homemade manure soil mix. So it's completely sustainable and we'll actually recycle this. I'll be planting bulbs into this when we empty these out shortly. We've got late fruiting strawberries in pots, which we've just more or less finished eating now in November. Um, here's Philippa, one of our stalwart that helps us keep everything in, in uh, shape. And we have strawberries in pots as well. Um, and tomatoes here, sorry, behind me. So we're just coming to the end of the strawberry uh, and raspberry crop, uh, strawberry and tomato cropping now. So this is Colin. He's only been scything three and a half months now, trained by a good friend of mine, and he's a real expert. Clearing grass uh, for the second or third time this year. Our ground grows so much. And then we'll use the cut material uh, as mulch around some of the young trees and shrubs we're planting in the forest garden. chickens. Very, very good recyclers of all kitchen waste and uh, food waste. And this is um, soya bean paste? Soya pulp, yeah. Soya pulp from... Yeah, from making soy, soya milk. 
Uh, well, it's obviously very protein rich. They love it. And they can convert that into eggs for us. Most of these hens are rescued uh, from more intensive units and they love being outside. They have the whole of the orchard, which you see behind me here to range through. Uh, here we're growing about 40 different types of apple tree, traditional apple. We've got pears, we've got cherries, we've got plums. This is a damson. Uh, we've even got medlars down the bottom and quinces. So we're growing a wide variety of fruit in a traditional way. And the uh, chickens and the geese live under here, eat the grass, control the pests that might eat the fruit, and uh, fertilize under the trees. Gandalf here, who Jackie thinks has a fearsome reputation, but he's a very handsome man with his lovely consort down below. He's here to act as a fox guard, although the orchard is fenced on all sides, but uh, if a fox were to come, we'd certainly know about it, because Gandalf would go into the attack. Uh, and he rules the roost down here, really, don't you, Gandalf? 